Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City, here is Steve Malzberg. As men and women age, uh, you know, men are tired of the race. I mean, they've been running it since their late teens. They're exhausted. All they want to do is take a deep breath. They want to retire. They want to play golf. They want to, you know, just enjoy life. And women are raring to go uh, because they feel like they've fulfilled their responsibilities. Their kids are out on their own. It's now time for them to show what they can do. There's a an army of women and uh, and frankly a very large group of older women who could make a real difference uh, to America's corporations, businesses, uh, academia, politics, you name it. And who's the leader of that group? Hillary Clinton, I'm sure in her mind. Welcome back to the Steve Molesberg Show. And joining us in studio is uh, Sabrina Schaefer, Executive Director of the Independent Women's Forum and Forbes.com contributor. Hello. Thank Hi. you for stopping by. Thanks Appreciate it. All right. Me. So first of all, um, that statement really struck me when she when she made it. Uh, now you're a you're a, a mom of three and you're you're working obviously doing a whole lot of things but I didn't know that we live in a world where you know women do nothing until they reach a certain age when the kids are out of school and then they want to get out there while the men just sit there with unbuckle their belt and sit and drink some <laughs> beer that's that's the world Hillary's describing I'm shocked I know it was a little bit stereotypical of men I felt kind of kind of yeah, bad well, she right. said men she didn't say some, some it was like all, all men, men. Yeah. I actually you know it was, it sort of felt um, that, that she was on to something though that women especially very often we talk about women having one or the other you're either home or you're in the workplace when really there's sort of a tapestry that you create over a lifetime right so you might be home for some years you might work part-time right. full-time and then maybe even when you're older you decide hey now is the time I can really make an impression in the in the workplace so there's some positive there I don't want to be un but too it was unfair self-serving self to, to, <laughs> to be kind I guess it might right? be right yeah. now that she's going to be a grandma and she also can run for president yeah that's true <laughs> all right and I'll the Republican problem. Um, you know, I've been told by some that no matter what Hillary says, uh, no matter what she, how she's found culpable on Benghazi, even no matter what, if she runs, women want her. Even across, you know, independent women, some Republican women, they just want a woman. Mm -hmm. And and to me, that's the worst reason to vote for somebody. Do you believe that she has a clear path if if if, no, if she wins the Democratic nomination because she's a woman and it's time? I don't think she has a clear path because she's a woman and it's time. I think she might have a clear path because there is a tremendous amount of power in the women's organizations on the left and that they will do a lot to, to ensure that she makes it to the White House. Um, but I don't think that all women are going to be fooled by this. Of course, you know, I, I think that I can agree with Hillary Clinton on from time to time on work-life balance issues, but on, you know, on the basics, on things like workplace regulations, like the Paycheck Fairness Act, or on Benghazi, or on climate change, there's all sorts of issues where we have some real differences. Absolutely. But a recent Wall Street Journal NBC News poll found 46% of women ages 18 to 49 feel positive towards the president. 52% of these women say they would favor Democrats this fall over Republicans. Unmarried female voters favored the president by 36 points in 2012. Um, and uh, this is a problem because they've painted this picture of a war on women mm -hmm. based on the comments of one person, based on the, the actions of one person, based on nothing, based on the fact that uh, they don't want, uh, some you know, Republicans don't favor free contraception right. for women, even the so-called abortion pill. And the Republicans, in my view, have allowed this, this, uh, um, this uh, you know, picture to be painted and to go unchallenged almost. They run away from it. Yeah, no, that's exactly what's going on. The, the word allow is perfect. Um, we have been, we're going to be up to two years since the 2012 election and really not a whole lot has changed, right? And we need to be having a conversation with women every day. We need to be out there saying, hey, we understand what you're balancing every day. We realize that there's a really positive story for women and girls today, but there also are a lot of women who face a lot of economic challenges right now. And the policies that we set in Washington aren't helping them, right? A top-down government-run healthcare system that's what that's not helping you with job lock right I'm right. um, not owning your health care dollars it's serious uh, the minimum wage debate is a, is a distraction um, there's gonna be a lot of job losses as a result of some of hiking the minimum wage and every state could hike their own minimum wage they if they sure want can. to they sure can and, and but what Republicans can't always be running away from the topic they have to embrace it they have to say you know what we're not so we're not so different we're not so um, foreign to women all right well absolutely right but I think they run away for for instance if they made clear 
what the left's stance on abortion is, right. what the le what Obama voted present on in the Illinois state legislature, and 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 how they basically favor abortion on demand. It's not what the public favors. If they say the wrong thing, it'll be caught on camera, and that'll be the end of right. it. We certainly saw this in the election in Virginia for for governor. Um, there was just you know Terry McAuliffe just threw one thing after another, and and for for Cuccinelli, someone I really like, but someone who stands for for school choice, for private property rights, for health care, you know. Um, he was advances. tagged by he the media. He was just tagged and he just didn't yeah. respond. So I think one thing that we can really take away from this is that right now the conversation is entirely one-sided. It is the, you know, coming from the progressive side and it's and that's all women here. So in order to have an influence, we have to have a two-sided conversation. Look at the workforce. Women, under Obama's policies, women, there are less women in the workforce. They're suffering economically. And and this phony issue, I'd love to hear your take on this phony issue, an issue, this, uh, this um, 77 cents on the dollar, which Obama brought up again yesterday in the minimum wage yeah. uh, speech he gave. Hey, you're only paying 80, 88 oh, cents on the dollar. And he says, well, wait, there's a lot of circumstances that go into that. <laughs> well, that, that deletes the whole argument Obama uses because it's a non-issue. Right. And but he's is, still out there saying it. He is. And even though during, you know, on equal payday, the White House itself admitted that maybe it's not quite That's right. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah and there then are mitigating still over, circumstances yeah. that affect that statistic. Exactly. And, but if it's, so if, it's, if, it, if those circumstances exist for the White House to pay less, then that's the reason everybody uh, is, is, is in that same statistic. Right. And it's, you know, it's such a bad message to tell women that society in the workplaces is openly hostile, antagonistic to women, right? But we all know why the, the, the wage gap exists. First of all, it's not 23 cents. It's probably more like four or five, right. six cents, right? And it's right? because of majors that are taken in college. Right. It's because of uh, professions chosen. It's because of leaving the workforce to have a family, coming back in. A lot of factors. And because people like myself, I never negotiated a wage. I never asked for a higher, you know, higher dollar amount. And that's something that actually I have control over. And there is a multi-million dollar industry of organizations and books and seminars and videos all dedicated towards teaching me that. So I'm going to pick one up this weekend. Wendy <laughs> Davis, um, you talk about a, uh, a female icon. Uh, she was applauded by the media because she filibustered in Texas against an abortion bill. Right. Ted Cruz, also from Texas, in the U.S. Senate filibustered for a different reason. He was the devil. She was the saint. Um, and now, and I'm glad about this, uh, she's fallen apart. I mean, she misrepresented, according to many, her resume and her life circumstances and how she got to where she is. Her campaign spokesman just resigned. The polls show she's really trailing bad. Uh, uh, terrible things by her campaign said about her opponent. And uh, I, I, it's like now she doesn't exist in the eyes of the media. I know. It's interesting. And it's, it's I'm sure, a big blow to some of the women's groups on the left that have really been standing up for her. Uh, the reality is that we are in serious economic times right now. And people need to hear a message that is positive and constructive, right? And and I think all of this dis debate over her lifestyle choices with her children and, Who paid and the for her, abortion, her husband paid for her college right. and she allegedly left him right after that, all this stuff. There's a reason that yeah. people hate lawmakers, right? That yeah, they hate Congress yeah. and this is it. All right, so your advice, here's John Boehner sitting right over there. He's watching. What does Sabrina tell John Boehner and, and, and the next Republican presidential candidate how to, to, to combat this perceived you know, Republicans hate women, whatever that even means. Start by talking to them and then have a clear plan of the things that you want to talk about. You need to have, explain what the challenges are to women today, of course, that we can sympathize with challenges, but we have to explain why government is not the answer and why you want to give women more flexibility in their lifestyle, whether it's in healthcare, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's in education. These are the things that matter to women and to moms. Um, and we got to start by actually taking a note. We can't have, I don't want to be invited to one more cocktail reception about how we're going to start talking to women. Yeah. The reality reality is the challenge is here and it is right now. Right, but, but, you know, uh, I can't remember who it was uh, and, and what, where it came up, but uh, somebody said something, uh, um, I think it was Huckabee or whatever. But, but remember when Hillary ran for the U.S. Senate and Rick, there was a debate with Rick Lazio, her Republican opponent, and he walked across the stage to have, said, would you sign this? And, the, oh, he invaded the space oh, of right. a woman. Yes. <laughs> uh, and Hillary's already talking about how women are treated differently. I mean, uh, I mean it, is that going to be a theme? If Hillary's the nominee, are the Republicans going to have to tread lightly or treat her differently? 
uh, or be accused of uh, gender bias the way they're accused of being racist if they don't agree with Obama. Right. I mean, it's, it's a real it's a real possibility, of course. And I do think that there are unique challenges for women running for public office, but that doesn't mean that we should have to not you skirt around the issues. If we're talking no, about Benghazi, no, no we should intended. talk about right. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Thank I didn't you realize. Very much. Yeah. Um, My we're going to talk about Benghazi. There, so, yeah. <laughs> no. We need to talk about educational freedom. We need to talk about things like the Paycheck Fairness Act and why it would be a disaster. And we shouldn't have to feel that we're scared to do so. So you think that uh, Republicans could make inroads uh, into the uh, disparity in the uh, previous election uh, results? Yeah, let's remember that in 2010 they did make inroads for the first time in 20 years, which is what set this whole war right. on women in motion. The problem is they have to now continue that conversation. They say we have a good story to tell about women, we have good policies to propose. I think they'll make inroads in the midterms. Uh, then, of course, the question is in the general election, you know, yeah. uh, especially if it's uh, if it's Hillary. It's going to be very interesting. And, of course, any conservative woman that comes forward is not really a woman, just like uh, any black right. conservative is not really black, and, uh, and you know, any uh, Hispanic is not really Hispanic, and it's right. a it's a sickness out there. Sabrina Schaefer, thank you very much. Thank you for Great having to me have today. You in, uh, director fun. of the Independent Women's Forum, and of course, contributor to Forbes.com. When we come back, it is Friday.